Hi, this is Crystal with Wear Magic. And in this community, this is a spiritual community. This is a grounded, rooted in our mission here on this planet. We experience normal life issues and human problems. We don't try to scapegoat and we don't try to blame everybody outside of us for why we're stuck and why we go through certain things. So today I want to talk about different spiritual communities, okay? Now with the We Are Magic community, we're gods, period. I mean, that's it. You know, we don't, you, you can assign an alien to it. You can assign an ascendant master to it, a specific energy to it. You are source having a human experience. That is my platform. My platform is to awaken the God DNA. They call it junk DNA, but it's the God DNA in you. It's that sacred spark, that infinite spark, that crown chakra, the true essence of who you are. That's who I'm waking up right now. You may be leaving religion. And in a religious community, we call the judgmental, hypocritical pieces of Pharisees. I call them Pharisees. These are the people that are always, well, you're not a good Christian or you're not a good this or good Christians don't talk like that or good Christians don't speak like that. Things like that. They're constantly judging. They're constantly telling you what you're doing wrong. Those are Pharisees, what I call in a religious community. In the spiritual community, they're here too. They're here too. So I've noticed when I came over to spirituality, I was walking away from religion. I was like, okay, this is a government ran thing worldwide to keep us stuck. And I appreciated, you know, Christianity as a foundation to keep me out of trouble, but it didn't, but it could have been worse, but I appreciate the foundation of it. The Ten Commandments. I mean, pretty much don't be an asshole, right? That's pretty much what the Ten Commandments are. <laughs> don't steal your neighbor's girl. Don't steal anything. Don't kill people. Don't be an asshole. You know, stuff like that. Um, don't be idol worshiping. Stop worshiping idols. <laughs> it's a commandment. Like, common sense shit. It is crazy. Um, you know, respect the most high. Source creator. The creator. You know, I know everyone wants to put God in different names and categories, but that infinite source creator, zero point, that's the most high. But it's not about worship. It's a relationship. It's an understanding. Okay. So in the spiritual community to me, it was me coming out of the fear, the fear programming of, oh, God's going to be pissed at me, or God's going to be so disappointed in me, or I'm going to go to hell. You know, I'm already on hell on earth. And no matter how much I beg Jesus to heal me or save me or do anything, no matter how much freaking faith I have in Jesus, it just kept, yeah, my life was just whew, quick. So when I came out, things started coming up. Like, every thing, I mean, it was just accountability and shadow work and facing myself and going through the dark night of the soul. So first thing, you're a light worker. I mean, oh yeah, I was, I was tagged a label, a light worker. Oh, you're a light. Your light is so amazing. Well, everyone is energy. Everyone, even the most low vibrating thing is light and energy. Um, but I noticed in the spiritual community, it was very religious. It was light versus dark. And it was archangels of the Bible and only them, only the Bible ones. Um, they threw Metatron in there and actually that's Enoch. You know, Enoch, um, against the dark ones, right? So my higher self is called the dark mother. And I, as a child have always loved black. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I'm a Scorpio, but I was Scorpioing before I even knew what that was. I didn't even know what that meant, but I was very into black. Halloween things and I was a witch every Halloween as a kid no matter what it was always it was always a witch I, I didn't know why I was like that but my whole life I was told you're too dark or you're too morbid or you're not a good Christian and you know it was just me constantly trying to prove to the community that I'm worthy to be in it and then I found myself being that in the like 
worker community. So once you start working with your higher self and your spirit guides, you'll, you'll start to see the team that works with you. They'll start revealing yourself. And my guides are not these fluffy woo woo creatures. I mean, they're just not like my aspects. Yeah. Loving, supportive, motherly, matriarchy, protective energy, but also destruction, chaos, chaos beings. So that's who my aspects are. But when you look at me, you're like, I don't see that in you. I don't see menacing. I don't see evil. I don't, because it's, they're, they're not, they're not, they are the balance. They're the karmic balance in the universe. They are the ones that clean up the mess that whatever being is messing up. And what I've come to learn is I can't blame the reptilians. I can't blame the archons. I can't even blame the matrix. You know who I blame? Humans. Because we are all humans on this planet. We are all equipped with source energy. We are all alien species in a sense. You have lives where you've lived so many times. And then you have aspects of yourself living right now in the multiverse spread out throughout. This is when you dream, you go to different realities. And in the stream, it feels natural. It feels like you should know this place, but you don't. You don't know. But everyone around you in this dream knows you and they're just talking to you and you're, you're conscious, you're lucid and you're like, this is not my house. This feels like my house, but this is not my house. This is not my neighborhood. It'll be like the same house, but a different neighborhood or a different house, but the same neighborhood or you'll have a completely different family, but they're all playing the roles of your family. It's crazy how many realities you have out here. So with that being said, there's just different aspects to us, but we have to get past the scapegoating and the blame game. So in the spiritual communities, there's so many. You have the light worker community. I do not see myself as a light worker. I know light workers love me. <laughs> I love y'all too. But I don't seem, I, I don't label myself like that. I'll, if anything, I'll call myself a mystic. I'm a mystic. Okay. I, I like exploring mysticism and the occult and magic and alchemy. Oh, love that stuff. Um, I, Ju I don't just work with the Violet Flame or um, Archangel Michael and Gabriel and all them and Metatron. I also work with Shiva and Baron Somini, Kali, Hades, Oya, Ra, Amen, Ra, Amen, Ra, Sekhmet, Hecate, Set, because of Neftis, you know, I mean, like, there's so many more energies out here. Now you got Buddha. They um, call him Yeshua. They call him Yahawashai in the Hebrew community. Yahusha HaMashiach in some Hebrew communities. You have the different ascendant masters. You have so many. You have Kuan Yin. You have Aset. You have um, Ma'at. You have Anubis. To Hootie, who in the light worker community will call Toth. That's Toth. That's, that's Toth. To Hootie, you know, work with the ancient African Kemet people. And then you have the ancestral of the Anunnaki. You have Enlil. You have Inki. You have Inanna. You have all of these different beings. You have um, Namu. You have An. You have all of these different beings but everyone is like no don't work with them because they are dark and that dark and light is yin and yang positive and negative yin is the dark that is the mother that is the void the zero point the feminine spirit of course patriarchy made it the devil we are the worst of the worst women. I mean, if you look in the Bible and all old religions, we are the trashiest of the trash. I mean, there's nothing we can do to 
ascend to the highest when it comes to patriarchy. We are worthless. We are just helpmates. We are to worship the man. And that is it. <laughs> I believe that. I did those things. I did all the things. I did everything they told me to. It didn't work. But that's just not true. We are balanced. We're one. You know, we complement one another, this energy. You know, I consider myself, well, the matrix will consider me what you call a tomboy. I have a masculine energy. I have my, I've had it my whole life, but I also have a feminine energy. But the feminine in me is not this, oh, I, I am soft and I am beautiful and I am. Yeah, there's a time and a place for all that. Bedtime or dealing with your children or just speaking to someone in love. But most of the time we're handling business. We are this too. I have her behind me for a reason because I want to get y'all to understand that they call this a demon. You know why? Because she killed a demon and the only way she could stop the demon was to drink up his blood and lap it up before it hit the ground and created other demons. So that's what you see around her neck and all around her waistband. She wears her enemies as clothing. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? But yeah, there's different spiritual communities. And then you have the other spiritual community where they feel they're better than everybody. Like we're the chosen ones. We're the 144,000. That's it. We're the only ones. And it's up to us to awaken the collective. <laughs> Here's the thing. If your higher self made it a point to not wake up during this incarnation in this life you're not going to do it i am not forcing anyone to wake up i used to be that type of person where i just have to save everyone but now i have it set with my intention i call in my soul tribe i call in who i agreed to call in when i came to this planet you know our higher selves got together and this is what we're doing so i'm only calling in those who understand where i'm coming from I'm not calling in everybody because that's when the trolls and the non-playable characters, you got people out here that are stealing content that are acting like me, getting in people's messages saying the ancestors sent me to give you a reading. Like it's so, so you got people like that. Um, there's just different types of spiritual communities. You have the spiritual communities that only deal with ancestors and I love them because they are so thankful and grateful for the ancestors, you know, and they work with them and they pray to them and they like, I have an ancestor altar and I honor my ancestors and it's the best thing I've ever done. So if you're starting out in the spiritual community, first thing you want to do is make an altar because you are your ancestors and your ancestors are you. And those are your guardian angels. You have so many. And when you heal, they heal. And then you heal future generations. And that's how you set your intention. Like, it ends with me. Like, the curses and all the things have been passed down from generation to generation. You are the Messiah of your clan. You're the Messiah of your generations. You, and it's not to give you a title. It's not to make you feel like you're important or anything like that. Just know that you're important. Now, it doesn't make you better than everybody. Again, we're all one in source. The person that's walking down the street, the non-playable character that refuses to wake up and just wants to live in the matrix because it's comfortable there, that's source too. Like I said, I know a lot of people are out here like, oh, the, that's an AI, that's a bot, that's a clone. At the end of the day, stop focusing on everything outside of you. Because if you keep focusing on what's outside of you, you won't look at what's within. You won't look within what's your, your situation and what you need to change and what you need to work on. That's what I used to do when I was religious and when I was a light worker and when I was like, they're the problem, they're the problem, the scapegoating. It's everybody. Oh, it's the darkness that's in the world that's causing this. Like light magic and black magic. That's racist. That came from racist shit. 
It's hilarious because what they call black magic was also practiced by the Norse community. They had shamans there too. Like it only became a black magic thing because of Haiti and because of hoodoo and voodoo and things of that nature. What they're doing, what is so different than going to a country and killing thousands of people all in the name of Jesus or wiping out a whole genocide of people. I'm mean, just causing gen- what's the difference with them? Cause I used to be, again, I was a Christian. So I judged so freaking hard and I was like, how can you kill such innocent creatures or anything like that? Like a chicken, but I'm eating chicken every day. Right. <laughs> We're so ridiculous. <laughs> But yeah, it's like the judging is still over here in the spiritual community. So it's like all of the Pharisees that left religion came over to the spiritual side. And now they're saying, no, no. And they call them new agers. You're a new ager. You are. You are a new ager. If you are only bringing Christianity with you, the the newest religion, if you're bringing Christianity with you into the spiritual community, you are a new ager. And there's nothing wrong with that. But don't go to someone who's been dealing with the ancient old ways, way before Abrahamic religion. The old ways of dealing with their ancestors and using alchemy and looking at them and going, oh, you're dark. That's demonic. That we work with demons over here. You know what demons are? Angels. I call Kali a demon. Here's the thing. When you become a spiritual person, you can play the division game because if that's your role and that's what you're called to do, go off. But you can also participate in this cute little game as source. Like, okay, I'm source. I'm crystal. But source is within me. So that means within me, the power within me, in my heart and in my crown chakra and even in my earth star chakra, I am rooted and grounded within these ancient energies to where I can transmute what you call negative or demon energy. So instead of, you know, the demons that we create, because we are God, and we manifest all these energies through our thoughts and our fear and everything that they've taught us, you can either be afraid of these things for the rest of your day, because you program them to attack you, you program them by the thought like, oh my God, there's probably a demon in here. Like well, started when we were little, <laughs> like we've been doing this the whole time. Or... Or you take control of it and you look at them like your children because you are source and you go, okay, I may have programmed you this way, but now you work for me. So now you have these energies, I call them diamonds, um, that you've created because they've been here the whole time and you, you become an alchemist. You transmute that energy into a protection spirit. So that's what I have. I have protection spirits now. So Kali has these spirits called Daikini. If you look up Daikini, (laughs) it's terrifying, but they protect her. (laughs) That's their job. Their job is not to be cute and fluffy. They're not cute, fluffy fairies. They're not. They will F you up. So that's the thing. Like you can have, you can set the intention as source. That anytime someone sends an attack on you, You're protected by these energies. Not only that, you got your spirit guides, like giving you the humbug, like, hey, such and such is not your friend. And we need to trust our intuition more because we don't, because we've been gaslit so much. Anytime we try to tell someone like, hey, what's up? What's what the energy feels kind of off? Like, are you mad at me? Like, is there a problem? No, you're tripping. You're, you're paranoid. Are you cheating on me? I have this god awful sickly feeling that you're cheating on me oh you are par- you're tripping you're stressing me out you know that type of thing to where you're just like well maybe i am tripping maybe i am paranoid only to find out you was right the whole time trust yourself who cares if it's not right or wrong always trust yourself because the more you trust your intuition the more you build that pineal gland and the pituitary gland muscle you're just building it and making it stronger and stronger You'll be working during the day and a thought will pop in your head and in a person or a situation and you'll hear something like, I hate you. And you're like, what? That's how this stuff works. 
Okay. It's not paranoia. It's just your spirit guides are giving you the humbug. You're tapped in your source. You're all spread out and you're just tapped into all of the reality. So yeah, you'll find out that you have haters, especially when you petition the universe and say that you're like, Hey, anytime there's a hater or someone that's not out for my highest good, reveal them to me, please. And remove them swiftly. Thanks. Yeah. You can ask God for assistance as your higher self. It's not a worship thing. It's a I'm in tune with source. I'm tapped in. I'm going to go past everybody else because I'm tapped in the source anyway and go, hey, help me. <laughs> this earthing stuff is hard. Earth school's kind of hard, isn't it? We got diseases down here. We got sicknesses. We got heartbreaks. We got, you know, besides the happiness and the great things, you got all the pain that comes with it. I mean, in the politics, it's just so much, right? So, yeah, you ask for help. And that's the problem. We don't ask for help. Sometimes we get so. We become so amazing within ourselves because of our enlightenment and what we think we know. That is, we forget, we forget that we have help. And this is what this is for. So, yeah, there's just different types of spiritual people. You know, you have so many different beliefs and so many things. And everyone's truth is their own truth. The problem is, is when we, as humans, when we try to project our truth onto others, like their truth is wrong. Like I said, you don't have to listen to me either. But if your method isn't working... Because I did all the things. I called in the light. I did all the things. And it didn't work. It didn't work. I ho -ho -pon 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 -pon. I did all the things. And then I had to do shadow work and go within myself and find the root cause as to why I kept attracting chaos into my life. And self-sabotage and all the shit and the programming that's been beaten to my head since a child. That's where I'm coming from. So yeah, just, you can research all the spiritual communities and wherever you fit in, you fit in. All right. All is welcome here, honey. All, I mean, like I said, I don't have a problem with religious people either. I have Christian friends. I have Hebrew friends. I, I have all kinds of friends because I don't judge them. And anytime they ask me a question about what I believe, and I know sometimes they're trying to trip me up or whatever. So you don't believe in God. I'm like, well, that's impossible. Of course, I look, like, <laughs> it's not like I'm not believing in myself. Of course, I believe in God. Um, so you don't believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I am my Lord and Savior. Um, Yeshua, Yahusha, Hamashiach, J was not in Hebrew. That is a fake name. But it's whatever you believe in. If you have faith in that name, that's what you go for. But if you read the Bible... He teaches you how you're supposed to show up in this world and you speak it and you command it because ye are gods. He said that. Okay. Just remember that one thing. You are so important. You're important. You are amazing. And now my stomach's growling. I gotta go. I gotta get this stuff together. I love y'all so much. Um, I will do a, another little update on my health and what's going on in the next podcast, hopefully. Or maybe I'll just do a live. I'm not sure yet. But um, I love y'all so much. Thank you for listening and watching. And remember, we are magic and we are one. And have a good week.